In this video, we're going to take a look at sketching parametric curves. Now, many of the parametric curves that you'll get at A level maths are curves that you will not easily recognize. And for that reason, it makes it difficult to sketch these parametric curves. However, by substituting values of t that cover the domain of t into each equation, then we can easily sketch any of these curves. So, for example, you might have x equals, say, 2t. You might have y equals, say, 4t. And then you'd have a domain here for t. So, for example, t is between minus 3 and 3. And what we'd do then is we'd set up a table here. So we'd have these values of t, so from minus 3 to 3. And then we'd have x equals 2t and y equals 4t. And what we'd do is we'd just substitute the values from minus 3 to 3, obtain those values for x and y, and then we'd just plot those points. Okay? So that's one way that we can easily sketch parametric curves. So... That's everything that we need here for our introduction. Let's take a look now at a couple of practice questions here for sketching parametric curves. Starting off here then with question one, we've been given the curve C, which has parametric equations of x equals t plus 1 and y equals t squared plus 2. And we can also see the given domain here for t. So for the first part here, we're asked to find a Cartesian equation of the curve C in the form y equals f of x. So where do we begin here? Well, if we're looking for the Cartesian equation of this curve C in the form y equals f of x, then it makes sense to rearrange this equation here for x, make t the subject, and then substitute that into this equation here for y. So let's just begin here by writing down these parametric equations. So x equal to t plus 1, and y is equal to t squared plus 2. So, like we said, we're going to rearrange this here and make t the subject. In that case, then, nice and straightforward here, t would be equal to x minus 1. And we're going to substitute this here into this equation for y. In that case, then, y is equal to t squared, so it's going to be x minus 1 squared. And don't forget the plus 2 here. So we get x minus 1 all squared plus 2. So now if we expand these door brackets here, and we get that y is equal to x squared. We get minus 2x. We then get minus 1 times minus 1, so that's positive 1. And don't forget the plus 2 here. And then if we simplify this here, we get that y is equal to x squared minus 2x. And then 1 plus 2 would give us 3 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to A there. Like you can see we've got it in the form now. Y equals f of x there. That's the solution to A. Let's take a look at B now. So for B here, we're asked to sketch the curve C on the given domain for T. So we can see that T goes between here, minus 3 and 3. So what I'm going to do now is set up a table here from minus 3 to 3 of these values of t, and I'll substitute those into these equations here for x and y. We've got t, we've got x equals t plus 1. We've also got y equals t squared plus 2. Okay? So make sure that your table looks a little bit neater than mine will look. Um, let's just start here by writing down the values of t. So we've got minus 3. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, and then we've got 1, 2, and 3. Okay. These are my values of t here. When x equal to t plus 1, that's going to be minus 3 plus 1, so it'll be minus 2. When x, oh sorry, when t is minus 2, x equal to minus 2 plus 1, that'll be minus 1. And you can see what the pattern's going to be here. When t is minus 1, Minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so this is just increasing by 1 here. Minus 2 minus 1 is 0, so this would be 1, 2, 3, and 4 there. So now we're going to substitute these values of t here into y. So y is equal to t squared plus 2. That's going to be minus 3 squared plus 2, so that's 9 plus 2, giving us 11 there. Now for minus 2 here, so that's going to be minus 2 squared, so that's 4, plus 2 would give us 6. Minus 1, so minus 1 squared would be 1, plus a 2, gives us 3. And we just keep going here, so when t is 0, we get 2. When t is 1, we get 3. 
when t is 2. Substitute that into y equals t squared plus 2, we get 6. And then finally, when t is 3 here, we get 11. Okay? So that gives us our table of values here. Now, obviously, this almost sounds a bit contradictory here because the Cartesian equation that we got here, we do actually recognize this. This is just a quadratic. Okay? So obviously, we could just sketch that. Um, but if I just use the method here of this table, because you'll need it for the next question anyway, um, let's just carry on with this anyway. So now if I just sketch my axes here, my y-axis here, and this is my x-axis here. So we're going here, so this is my x values here. So we're going from minus 2 to 4. So that's minus 2. Minus 1, this would be 0, so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 here at the very end. And then for the y values here, we're going from, what's our smallest value, 2 here, up to 11. So we'll worry about the y values in a moment, so let's just plot these points here then. So we've got minus 2, 11, so minus 2, and then say up 11, let's just say that's there. We then got minus 1 here, so that's minus 1, 6. Let's say that's there. We then got 0, 3. So 0, 3. Say that's there. We then got 1, 2. Got that there. We then got 2, 3. And we've got 3, 6. 3, 6. That should obviously be in line with this point here because that also has a height of 6. Uh, it might not be perfect on mine, but this is just a sketch. And then finally we've got 411, so again, 4 units long, and they should be the same height as this point here. Let's see there. Okay. Like we said, we're going to get a, um, a parabola here. This is a quadratic, and obviously we can see from the, the points that we plotted here, we are going to get that quadratic shape. So now if I just join these up here, there we have it. It should go through that point there. Um, but like I said, it's just a sketch. And I am doing it on a tablet, so that's my excuse. It's not the easiest. But there we have it. So that's our sketch there for the curve C on the given domain for T. Okay, that's our solution to B there. And there we have it. So that's the solution there to question one. And if we just take a look here then, at one more question to finish with. So question two here, we've been given the curve C, which has parametric equations of X equals T cubed and Y equals T squared, the T being between minus two and two there. So for the first part here, we have to complete the table below. So what we can see here is we've got our values of t here, so between minus 2 and 2. And we've got x equals t cubed and y equals t squared. So it should hopefully be nice and straightforward here to get us started. So when t is minus 2 here, then x in this case is minus 2 cubed, that would be minus 8. We keep going along here when t is minus 1. Minus 1 cubed, that would be minus 1. When t is 0, that would be 0. When t is 1, that would be 1 cubed, which is 1. And finally, when t is 2 here, we get x equals 2 cubed, that would be 8. We now just need to repeat this here for y equals t squared. So in this case then, when t is minus 2, minus 2 squared, that would be 4. When t is minus 1, that would be minus 1 squared, giving us 1. For 0, obviously we just get 0 here. And then when t is 1, we get 1 squared, which is 1. And then finally, when t is 2 here, 2 squared is 4. Okay, that's the first part done there. That gives us our complete table. That's the solution to A. And then for B here, it says, hence or otherwise, sketch the curve C. So all we need to do here now is just use this table above. So we've got these points here, so minus 8, 4. So we're going up in 1s here, so minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8. And then we go up 4. That would be approximately here. Okay. That's our first point there. That's minus 8, 4. We then got minus 1 and 1. That would be here and here. So then we've got 0, 0. This point here. We then got 1, 1. So one unit long and up 1. And then finally, we've got 8, 4 here. So we've got 8 units along. And up 4. Okay, so where's that going to be? 6, 7, 8, up 4. That will be roughly there. Okay. And what we're getting here is this 
funny looking kind of like V shape here. And down. Again, I'm doing it freehand, it's not the easiest. I'm going to look, say, like that. I'm going to go back up here like this. Like so. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the sketch of the curve C there. That gives the solution to B. And that gives the solution there to question two. That brings the end of this video on sketching parametric curves. In the next video, we're going to take a look at points of intersections of parametric curves.